we will start the questioning, and I'll I'll start off. Um, I guess let me just direct this to you, Mr. Dodaro, and also to you, uh, Mr. Vaney. Uh, I mean, we all know in terms of um, how important this is, but is it really creating jobs? Jobs being created out of the stimulus package? Well, I think it's clear that the, the use of, of the money is intended for that purpose. The real question that we we're looking at in this case is what's the accuracy of the information that's that's being reported and the accuracy of the information needs to be improved and that that would I say would be the bottom line because there, but you do think jobs are being created well uh, the funds are being used for the appropriate purposes from what we've we've seen but the question is uh, you know how many jobs would be created or not there, there are several dimensions of this first of all of the amount the 787 billion dollars that is estimated to be spent as of the reporting period here only 22 percent of that amount of money had been spent as of September 30th it was 173 billion dollars point number two is that that was spent both in the tax cuts the entitlement programs unemployment insurance Medicaid and others and then in grants contracts and and, and other things the, the recipient reports only deal with the grants and contracts. So of the $173 billion that's been spent under the Recovery Act, only $47 billion is uh, subject to the reporting requirements under the Act. So even if you get an accurate count under the recipient reports, it's still a subset and it only focuses on job creation. Uh, and we think and we, we believe we made good recommendations to improve the accuracy so that there's a better basis for making informed judgments about how many jobs were created or saved. Mm -hmm. Mr. Devaney? Oh, I think I would agree totally with that. I think there's probably no doubt jobs are being created or saved. It's just the number and the accuracy of the number. We have a number. Uh, it's based on what the recipients told us uh, their interpretation of the guidance was. And uh, as the uh, acting controller suggests, um, that guidance needs to be clarified in a, in a big way, in a big hurry, to help recipients be a lot clearer uh, the next time they report. Uh, I have no doubt that there's a lot of jobs being created. I think it could be above or below 640. I think missing reports might drive the job numbers up. And I think there's enough inaccuracies in here to question the 640 number. It might go down. So it's somewhere in the middle there is, is a balancing act. And, and as the quarters go on and as the accuracy gets better and recipients get better at reporting accurately, I think we'll get a much better picture. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the first time. And there were a lot of challenges for both recipients and, and agencies and, quite frankly, for my board. So um, my hope is that as we go forward, this is all going to get better. Right. You know, um, uh, the non-compliance, do you think that's the fact in terms of um, the lack of staff or being an unfunded mandate? Uh, what do you think um, 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 uh, that really sort of creates the non-compliance? Do you think that they're overworked? Are the, the request is just too much for them to handle at this time? Uh, I'm trying to get a handle on it because I yeah. like the idea when you indicated the fact that maybe some kind of penalty, and as you know that uh, the ranking member in this, this committee has put forth legislation, you know, trying to create some relief, you know, uh, and of course that's one reason, another reason why I have, you know, interest in this, and of course maybe get your response even to our legislation. I think there's, there's, there's probably a number of reasons why reporters, uh, why recipients didn't report. Um, it could be as simple as they didn't want to. Uh, two, they were confused and didn't know they had to. Um, there are no penalties, and in that kind of a situation, just my enforcement background leads to, be, to believe that uh, penalties are a deterrent effect, and if there were some, I think we would have gotten better compliance. Um, but um, the fact is, I'm still trying to get a handle on how many didn't. Um, I think uh, Mr. Dodaro suggested that it may be as high as 10 percent. Um, I'm in that range. Our, we're in that range ourselves. That's a little higher than what OMB's uh, early estimates are, but I'm waiting for that list. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, um, um, uh, Mr. Pocari, did you indicate in terms of your, your situation has been very different? Uh, I understand you said 96 percent. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we, we uh, of our 1,037 recipients that were required to report, 96 percent uh, did. And, and I would point out that they are widely varying in capability. Some were very large state DOTs. Uh, we also had uh, municipalities like High Point, North Carolina, where you had one person who was uh, planning, designing, bidding the project, and doing all the reporting requirements. Uh, and we believe that is one of the reasons that uh, um, uh, th that 4% were not able to report. Right. 